Hi, my name's Adam and welcome to Urban Survival UK. On this episode, I just want to talk about what I think could happen if the power fails to your home, whether it's for a few hours, a few days, or even a few weeks, and think about what would be affected. So for example, your fridge would stop, your fridge freezer would stop. So all the food in there, you know, it's going to perish. What are you going to do about that? Your boiler, your gas boiler or your electric boiler, it's going to stop working. So you've got no hot water, no heating. Um, what else? You know, there's a number of things that are going to fail from the, your electric oven. That's not going to work. If you've got electric hob, that's not going to work. Your internet, TV, the lighting, you know, you, you need to think about all these different bits and bobs. You know, can you live without some of them? And if you can't, then how are you going to get around that situation? Heat. You know, with your boiler failing, have you got something to keep you warm? Log burner, extra clothing. There's a number of things. So I want to take you through what I've got in place to cover those things if that happens or when that happens. Okay, what I want to do here is basically just cover log burners in general uh, before we move on to some other bits and bobs. I just explain a couple of basic things that I find really great about log burners. Obviously they give out loads of heat. So if you've got a, you know, a nice, a big room, it will still warm it pretty good. Obviously depending on what size your log burner is. Um, this one originally came with the flue coming from the top uh, and I changed it to have the flue coming out the back simply because I can put things on the top to cook, either food or even a big kettle. Uh, doing some food now, just doing a stew, which is lovely. That's why my dog is there, because he can smell it. Little monkey. Um, but yeah, like I said, you could put a big kettle on there or a big uh, container full of water so you can wash in, you know? So it kind of does the job of a boiler as well. Uh, obviously you can use wood, coal, if you get a multi-fuel one, which is always good to have. So yeah, it's, it's really important. If you're lucky enough to have a wood burner, then test it out. Like I said earlier, test it out, do some cooking on it, try it out. And if it does have a flue going through the top, have a look if it's possible to have it going out the rear at the back because okay it might bring the, the wood burner forward slightly but you can use it for so many more things and the way i look at it if you if you're using logs in your wood burner to, to warm your home you might as well be using it to cook your dinner that night or your lunch even simple things like bacon sandwiches or anything just just to fry up on the top think about what tools you're going to need i've always got a little hand axe for doing some kindling uh, and splitting some small logs i've got a little device there which is great for using kindling on you just put it on the top and you tap it and it splits the wood really simply instead of messing around trying to chop it up or potentially chop off your finger but yeah hand axe always have a spare hand axe as well and obviously you want to have um a bigger wood splitter so there's, there's several different types out there uh, just to split the logs the bigger logs uh, and think about have you got enough wood you know if you've got enough storage for your wood if you haven't, do you have someone local nearby where you can get it pretty quick if need be? It's things like wood, which will be hard to come by, um, and suitable wood as well. It takes time to get the right wood and needs to season and stuff like that. But so there's a number of things to think about uh, with the wood burner. But for me, if you've got the space and the time and the money to get one, get one. It's a no-brainer. So in a minute, what I'm going to do is go on to cooking with other bits and bobs, cooking outside, cooking inside if you if, if you haven't got a wood burner or we haven't got the space then other ways we can use different gas portable gas stoves and things like that different sizes different types right down to your little camping ones so we're going to move on to that next and go from there okay what i've got here is a double gas hob now these are great i use this one all the time mainly for making coffee but you can cook anything on it just like a normal hob this one's cool because it's got a little grill underneath so if you want to do toast or omelettes and things like that that's brilliant it's basically connected down from a hose down to a blue butane gas bottle uh, you do different ones you can put lpg gas bottles on them all sorts there's loads of different ones on the market as well bigger ones smaller ones they're just a bit more robust and solid uh, more robust than what the the little portable ones are because although they're great and they take the little tiny gas bottles they don't burn for very long they don't last very long and they're just a bit clumbersome um, and a bit more lightweight. See, I've had this one for a long time. It's, it scrubs up well, it lasts well. I'll just zoom in on it a bit so you can see it. Uh, like I said, there's loads of different models on the market and they're quite reasonably priced. This one needs a bit of a clean, a bit of a scrub, but um, 
yeah, they, they'll last for several years, really, uh, if you look after them. Great bits of kit, lightweight, fold away, they can go in your car if you need to bug out or in your bag even. But um, yeah, like I said, definitely get one of those, put it away. Uh, it will basically take over from your gas hob if that fails, if it's electric, for example, and it won't work. But yeah, brilliant bit of kit. Right, what we've got here is a small portable gas hob. Uh, great size, literally fantastic to use out and about or as an emergency backup. Flip that around, open this up. We lift that out of the box so you can see it a bit clearer. Takes these uh, butane gas bottles, cheap as chips. You get these for about a pound each if you buy them in bulk. Um, again, you can buy the gas and the portable hobs pretty much anywhere these days. Supermarkets, obviously online, they're really cheap. But yeah, about, about you'll pick them up for about 15 pounds, up to 20 odd pounds. Um, yeah, really simple gas just goes in here. So that closes over, connect the gas there, and literally this is a self-ignition. Boff, and there you go, you've got your flame going. Um, you get quite a lot of burn time from one gas bottle. You know, you can do several meals of one gas bottle. Uh, again, great for camping uh, out and about if you've got a camper van or something like that. Really good. But for the purpose of this video, fantastic backup in your home, you know, just for like a temporary backup for boiling the kettle. Obviously, if you've got something like this, you want to have a spare kettle suitable to boil on the gas. So that's always handy. Just a little simple one like so, always good to have. Um, and anything else you might need, suitable pots and pans to use on it as well. But yeah, brilliant, that's that one. Like, like I said earlier, just disconnect, really safe to use, flick it away. Boff, boff, boff. Obviously make sure that's cooled down. And away you go, pack it away. An even smaller one. Little blue, I've had this for years. To be fair, all these I've had for a long time, so there probably is better versions out now. Um, but these have never really let me down. This one's a little bit different. Take it out of its box. Obviously, they all come with the um, instructions. Yeah, that one's from Asda, as you can see. Uh, I think I got this one because it is nice and small. But this one's, yeah, same thing. Just it opens up. The gas goes in there, like so covers it up in there and then click 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 away you go nice and simple really tiny really lightweight I mean you could take it out of its package in there and just put that in your rucksack and away you go we'll keep it in the back of the car as a spare but like I said cheap as chips probably 15 pounds 20 pounds can't go wrong what a bargain and I literally just get these out of storage I've had this one probably 10 years and and the last one you just connect them up and they like first time and failing that, the only thing that really is going to go wrong on these is, is the actual, the clicker on, on, the, on the ignition. And if that goes wrong, you just use a lighter or a match. So, yeah, brilliant bit of kit. Okay, moving on to the individual gas burners. Again, these are brilliant for using at home, if you want to. Um, great for out and about on the move or in the vehicle. This one is really straightforward regulator there to turn it up and down. Now these are obviously designed to go into the, the camping gas bottles. They're, they're quite expensive. Um, they're good. They are better than the standard butane ones. <clears throat> they're better than these. But what you can get, which I found, and it works brilliant for cooking, is an adapter that converts this type of bottle here to this gas here. So it's really simple. You screw in your converter your adapter to convert it down and then you attach your gas bottle like so turn the gas on and fire away so as you can see burning nicely there sometimes they you know these may need a little bit of a shake it's cold sometimes you get the yellow flame but it's nothing to worry about as long as you're using it in a safe environment safe area there's no other gas bottles or anything around or any other things which could ignite or explode so yeah obviously nice long lead on this to keep this gas out of the way uh, you could attach this to a, a, a butane gas bottle if you want to or LPG anything like that propane gas bottle 
But yeah, really simple, nice solid base. You could put a pan on there, easy peasy. And again, turn it up or down. And yeah, again, like I said, these adapters, you get them online. Literally about, I think, I'll double check, but a few quid, five quid. So yeah, that's that one there. Moving across, so another type, same kind of thing. Slightly more compact. This one you fold out and open up the legs afterwards. Quite good. Folds out like so. Click, click, click. And away you go. Pretty much the same. Again, for me, that's a spare one. Also got another one here, which I've used a few times camping when I've been uh, walking on the trail where it's on the coast, really windy. Where I'm not going to use any other form of fire lighting, but gas. Um, again, this all folds away in here. Same principle, these open out. So, legs come out. This one's actually got its own little bit so clicker for lighting, ignited in there. So that's quite good. But yeah, I've uh, got several different ones of these. But yeah, bigger one, bigger single one, to a medium, to smaller. And you can get them even smaller than this if you want to for, for walking reasons, for, li for lightweight reasons. And there you go. So obviously when the power goes, your fridge and your fridge freezer is gonna have no power. So it's gonna start defrosting and your fridge is gonna start warming up. So generally with a fridge, you've got between four and six hours depending on what time of year it is and how warm your home is. And a fridge freezer, if it's half full, you've got about 24 hours before it starts to fall. And if it's full, generally about 48 hours. So yeah, two days before your fridge freezer, or well your freezer will potentially be de-icing. It will start melting and dripping out everywhere. So you, you've got a couple of days, so there's no panic. But if the power's off for longer than 24 hours, two days, you need to start thinking about what you can do with the food. So the simplest thing to do really is get yourself a cool box, um, depending on how big your family is or how big your household is, is how big you obviously want your cool box. There's loads out there. There's loads of really, really good cool boxes these days. It's worth investing on a, on a slightly better one simply because they stay colder for longer. Uh, this one is a Yeti. Uh, Yeti Tundra. I've had a few over the years. This is my newest one simply because it's solid. You can you can literally you can you can kneel on it. You can sit on it. It's great um, for chucking around in the car, whatever. It's it's advertised as a uh, bear proof, so so it's obviously very tough. Not that we get any bears here in the UK. Um, might do one day. You never know. But. What I like about it is it stays cold. So I tried this out. I filled it with ice. I used it uh, when I've been away in the, in, the, in the van camping or yeah, just generally used it a lot, especially in the summer. Um, and it stays cold. So the ice I put in there originally to start it off stays frozen for three days. Three days. And that's having the lid open and shut, getting bits of food out, open and shut. And it's still been frozen after three days. So for me, that's brilliant. Now, if I hadn't opened the lid, it probably would stay frozen for longer. Um, but what I like about this one is, like I said, it's solid. It's quite heavy because it's so thick. The walls are really thick. Obviously, that's for insulation reasons. It's really simple. Handles on it, it's great. Um, it's not massive inside. I think it's just under 33 litres. Um, but what it's got is a little bit on top to put potentially you know, veg salad or things that aren't going to get squashed and then frozen things or, or meat in the bottom. What I've done here is, is one thing I do a lot, is this is an old, you might recognize it, it's the inside of a wine box or cider box. And I've washed it out, used some uh, sterilizing fluid, so it's all clean, washed it out again, and then filled it with water. And what I do is I keep these in the freezer and they freeze, and then when the time comes, when I want to use them to go out camping or wherever, I literally put them in here and they act as my ice to keep everything cold. I got a few of these 
different, I've just been saving up. Um, and I put them in there, to be fair, you could probably just get away with one, but maybe two is better. And then once it's, once it's defrosted after a few days, you can then use it as drinking water. Uh, because it's, like I said earlier, it's sterilized, it's clean. At the same time, so when your fridge freezes, or your fridge or your freezer's potentially thawed out, before it gets too cold, or too warm, sorry, you want to transfer these over to your cool box and have this ready to then transfer your frozen food into here. Obviously, you're not going to get all of it in there, but things which are potentially going to perish quicker, like meat and things, get them in here. Frozen veg and things like that will last a bit longer, as long as you keep them cold. I mean, another way you can do it is put in a box outside. If, it, if it's winter time, obviously it's cold enough to keep things cold anyway. But obviously if it's summer and it's, or spring and it's warmed up a bit, you, you need to really use a cool box. So there's lots of different types of cool boxes. Obviously you've got electric ones, which plug into your camper van, your caravan, your car, through like a cigarette lighter, things like that. The way I look at it, <clears throat> this is simple and effective for me, for what I want it for. But there is, like I said, there's loads of electric ones in the market, which are really good. Uh, you have like one half, which is for frozen things, the other half's a fridge, or you can, you can change it around so it's all frozen. They've got basically temperature, temperature control in the front. But you know, it depends what you want to spend. If you want to spend that much on one, then, then great. But the way I look at it, it's just keep it simple. Because once that food in there is eaten up and it's defrosted, then it's kind of redundant really for what you want it for anyway. So yeah, it depends. It depends what situation it is really. But for me, this is, this is, um, this is great and it works and I'd highly recommend it. Like I said, they are expensive, but it's, I think it's worth it in the long run. Uh, and also it's, it's just a great storage container as well. Really, really good bit of kit. Okay, right, what I've got here is a selection of battery powered lights, what I would call indoor lights. I have lots of outdoor lights, but I'll go into those a bit later. This is just indoor lights or what I would call indoor lights. Some of them are powered by individual batteries that you buy, and some have got built-in batteries. I always keep a selection of batteries. These ones are just double A's, but the more batteries you've got in stock, the better. Obviously, try and rotate them as much as you can every, I don't know, six months, 12 months, or something like that. Just, just keep an eye on your batteries, because they do tend to leak if they're left on their own or, or, or in the damp areas and stuff like that. But yeah, going back to the, the, the lights here, so, a lot of these require uh, mini USB charging cables or little cables that charge them. So I always keep those in a safe place and I keep a different selection, spare ones of those as well. Okay, right, so starting off with simple tea lights candles. You know, you can't have enough of these. Self-explanatory, no brainer, brilliant. Great, great for um, emergencies if the power goes. Again, just be really careful with these. Uh, you know, it's a naked flame. Ideally have them in a little lantern. There's lots of different lanterns you can buy. They're not very expensive. Uh, and keep them somewhere safe and out of reach of children and things like that. So put that one out of the way. Uh, the other one is the old storm lanterns. These are great, not particularly expensive. Buy them in bulk. They're there when you need them then. Uh, you fill them up, make sure the wick's good. Make sure you have spare wicks. You can buy them as well. Keep them with, it, with your paraffin, uh, just in case. And there's your paraffin there. Again, cheap to run, go on and on and on forever, burn for ages, but again, be careful because you have got, potentially got a naked flame in there, uh, which can do some damage um, and use them in obviously a well-ventilated area. The paraffin, again, stock up, get a box of that, a box of four, a box of six, whatever you think you might need, that's that. So, right, going back to the, the torches, uh, starting from the top here, simple little docking station torch. This is fine, great, got a little hanging hook on. Uh, generally the, the light will go all night if it's on a low setting. Simple, ready to go for the power cut, you can grab it, it's already charged, ready to go. Similar kind of thing here, just a little portable one. Good, got the front light as well. You'd normally buy those in twos or threes online. You know, you put them around the place, put one in your car, one in, in the kitchen, wherever. Similar kind of thing there, that's across batteries, spin around, magnetic. Across to here, these are tiny little lights, not particularly bright, but great for night lights and emergency lights. You just press them. Because they're such low power, they, they, they go on for hours, all night easily. Uh, if, if you've got small kids, they're quite good to put 
in the bathroom or in the hallway or somewhere like that. But, um, but yeah, brilliant. Different light settings, different colours, depending on what kind of mood you're in or set the mood. But yeah, just different um, lights on that one. Again, similar kind of things, slightly bigger. Generally will last a bit longer. Ooh, little lullaby with that one. Um, you just tap it, tap it on the top. Quite good, different settings. Pretty much exactly the same as again. Bigger, lasts a longer, put it on the side. You can just kind of dot these around. Again, they're not particularly expensive, but really effective. And because they're low power, they can just go on and on and on. Moving back across here, what we got? Got these little ones, these are great. Got these online, really bright. Bit too bright to have on all the time, but great for somewhere like in the garage or under the stairs or somewhere you need to get to quick. Little clicky carabiner, um, magnetic on the side, strobe set in, and a little stand. Oh, and it comes with a little bottle opener on the top. It's always handy. A couple of those, they're good. Again, they charge with a little mini USB on the side. Standard little torches, flashlights. These have been unopened. So I've got another one which I've opened, which is in the car to test. Batteries come with them ready to go. A little pouch. I just keep them sealed up, ready, ready for when you need them. Maybe you want to give one to your neighbour or you know your family member if they haven't got something. But it could not too expensive. I think they were four pounds each. Really cheap. Across here, strobe uh, tube lights. Really good. Different settings. One. To. Again, these, these go on all night. They're really good, they just hold their charge so well. You can adjust them. They've got mat uh, magnets on the bottom here and here, so you can hook them onto your, your fridge, connect it to your, your, your oven door or something, you know, depending on where you want it. Um, and they also do come with little hooks on the top and bottom as well. Uh, I've got a few of those, I've got three here, but I've got a few more just because they're good to scatter around if you need them. Uh, yeah, nice. And they give out a real nice bright light in a, in a large area. If you want to light the room up, they're, they're great for that. Really good. These are a bit different. Um, three of these in a pack, they come. They've obviously got the little light you can press on and off if you need them. But what I like about them is it comes with this little remote control where you click it and they turn on high, low, high, low. And then if you want to turn it off. So again, even if you just want to use it to get up in the, in the night, if you need to go to the loo, or if the power's gone all of a sudden. This comes with a little clip, you can click it to the wall, and so do these, these clips to the wall or the ceiling, and you can just press it, and you've got instant light, and so on, so yeah, put it self explanatory, but yeah, good. These are great, really, really, really basic. Waterproof, you know, solid. These are literally a little tiny torch, press the top. It's only one little LED, but they're a pound, from Poundland or from the pound shop. They're brilliant. I, I bought a load of those and just gave them out to my friends and family. Just said that, here you go, put this in your car, in your glove box, or put it in your bag, your school bag or something, you know, or your purse. They're great, really lightweight, kind of, you know, bomb proof, really. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, moving across here, this one's a little more, a little bit more brighter. TUP, oh, what's it, TUP, Nightcore. I use this in my everyday carry, but again, charge it, mini USB, really bright, 1000 lumen, not cheap, but. I use it a lot. It's great to have on you or next to your bed or something or in the drawer. Across to here, standard head torch. Got loads of these. Everyone should have a head torch in your car again or perhaps in your house. Anyway, just, they're, they're not particularly expensive now. You can get some really good head torches, quite small compact ones for not very much money now, so there's no excuse. But some come, you can charge them USB wise or you, some take batteries. Um, and the last one on here, this is a Makita battery for my power tools. I use Makita, some people use DeWalt. Uh, this one here, the reason I got this is I'm going to show you this just clicks into here. And this is a torch. It basically just lights up the room. It's quite bright, there's different settings on it. Depending on what you want it for, kind of strobe light as well. Uh, the other thing this is great for is on the side, you can charge your phone or you can charge other other things from it. So you could charge torches from this because it's got a big chunky battery. So yeah, again, I got that online, just clips on, clips off. Right, so I've got power banks here. Um, I use these on a daily basis anyway, but I always make sure they're fully charged, ready for any occasion, especially if there's power loss in your home. They come in different sizes, a slightly bigger one. This is uh, an anchor 
anchors are good mate they do all, all types of um, power banks different loads of different sizes good power banks these are all different makes down to smaller ones and they do even smaller ones but uh, obviously the smaller they are the less power they hold but great for phones laptops iPads things like that brilliant or even charging other devices like torches and things like we we're discussing about earlier brilliant so no brainer always have these on you on your person or in your house or in your vehicle etc brilliant they will get you out of trouble again and again and again moving across here now these are inverters most people know what they are but what basically what they do is they convert power from say for example a 12 volt battery like a car battery or something and put it into kind of 230 volts so basically what you plug in at home you kind of free pin plug in there you could use on this depending on how powerful it is so you don't want it if you use say a really like a microwave something that needs a lot of power it won't work so mainly it's for little things like um fridge freezers 12 volt fridge freezers the small ones or maybe you could charge a laptop off it or run a small fan to to keep you cool um, but anything like big powerful heaters and things that generally don't work very well and if they do work they won't last very long they'll just literally suck the power out of the battery um, again that's a 12 volt and that's a 12 volt this one's a bit different I bought four of these this is my spare one I keep packed away um, this is an 18 volt so what this one does same principle again you've got your free pin plug there which is used in the UK and what you do I use a lot of Makita power tools uh, you know there's loads out there DeWalt, Bosch, loads but um, I use Makita power tools so it means I've got a lot of these batteries which are really good batteries solid powerful not cheap but really good and all these do is simply click into here and this then gives me an inverter with power anywhere I want to go really really good this will run a TV anything like that you know a small size TV small to medium TV this will run for a few hours just on one of these batteries now I've got lots of these batteries so in theory I could run several things so uh, again for example if if your combi boiler stopped working because the power to your house has failed then you could in theory plug your combi boiler into this which would give you enough power to ignite the boiler so you can have a shower or just have some hot water or just yeah work it that way so or a small boiler um alternatively you could you could plug it into your tv to catch the news you could there's, there's a number of things what i've used this for a lot as well is where i've been stuck before i've plugged my uh hub internet hub into it and that's worked i use a system for my internet called a starlink system which is made by tesla and it's perfect for this you just plug it in and it gives you an hour or two of internet uh, even longer even longer than that if you want to but yeah brilliant bit of kit not particularly expensive about 28 pounds for one of these and obviously the more batteries you have the more things you can use and charge like i said i got four this is my spare one but the other three i use on different things so yeah great great bit of kit inverters are brilliant if they're used correctly and you can get a lot of use out of them so i recommend having a look at them Obviously, you always read the instructions and understand how they work before you use them, anything to do with electric and stuff like that. So, yeah, brilliant. Um, right, really simple. Power's gone in your house, got no form of communication. So, yeah, radio, standard radio. This one's pre charged, no batteries. Well, there is, there's built in batteries, so you just charge it. And the reason I chose this one is because it's quite light. I could take it out and about with me. It's got a really good sound, so if you want to listen to some music, or whatever. But it's got a really long battery life on it. From one charge so it's a good it's a good uh, good all-round radio pretty good so and the last thing I want to do is talk about again this big beast which is my Makita radio same make as my drill and my batteries again that just takes a battery in the back and why I want to mention this is again it's got all the digital DAB stations on it and it's got all sorts of built-in lights and things but again you can charge you can charge your phone devices off it it's waterproof you wouldn't want to carry it around you if you're out and about but for a static radio it's great to use in the home you can link your phone to it 
for your own music and as well. So, and the, the battery on them, one of these batteries goes in the back and it, it lasts for ages. It lasts a really long time. Good bit of kit to have around, especially if you want to keep up to date with, again, the news or the weather or whatever, it depends what's going on in a situation. But generally, I, again, I use this every day. It's a great bit of kit. Quite big, quite heavy, quite clumsome, but solid, waterproof, brilliant stuff, really good. Hopefully you found this episode useful or handy in some areas. I can't possibly cover everything because we'd be here all day talking about it. But on the next one, we're gonna be covering uh, generators, obviously outdoor generators, small ones up to big ones, pros and cons, a bit on that. And also I wanna cover some home security, what you can put in place inside your home, also outside to help out with things like that. And then a bit more on cooking, but this time it's gonna be cooking outside different techniques on an open fire and things like that. So if you're interested in any of that, don't forget to click, subscribe above. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Take care. Very nice. Adam, what are you having? Oh, I've got, uh, I've got mushrooms uh, and some spring onions that I've picked from the field across the road. And uh, my new sports. Uh, Right, so what we've got here is basically my food storage. Um, everything from tin food to alcohol to cereal, ready rice, um, what we're talking about, see if we can ready, stuff like that. We need them to be able to communicate with people. If need be, I've got some friends in that. This is my local.